Welcome back everybody. Now one of the most common questions I ever get is asking me what happened to a particular product after my review is over. So that's one of the reasons I do these videos. This is my 24th update video where I actually take a look back at 10 past products I reviewed in order. And I'll let you know if I continue to use them or not, how they went, if I use them at all. So if you missed the original video, this is kind of a quick recap. And if you did see it, this will let you know if I continue to use it afterwards or why I didn't. But let's jump right into it with update number 24. The 231st product review that I did was a collection of hands-free can openers. Let's first take a look at how the original review went. Now today I've got five automatic hands-free can openers. Handy can opener, two can, Tornado F4, Insteco, and the Kitchen Mama. These are all automatic hands-free one-touch can openers. You place on top of the can. Okay, that's good. Ooh, the magnet's not, oh, the magnet worked. It doesn't seem like it's flopping around quite as much. It's going pretty smoothly. This one has almost a violent stop to it. It just says, done. Look at it shimmy again. It's like a little bug shimmying it back and forth. Oh, it's still going. It doesn't know when to stop. It's chaos in here. I feel like it's, it should have stopped already. Yeah, all these can openers, by the way, have the smooth, are the smooth. Only about half of the time these magnets work, it seems like, even on any of them, not just this one. The good news is that I just opened 20 cans and I didn't have any failures. Uh, the bad news is that I have to try to pick an order for these. So in the end, I never really used any of these very much after my original review. I left them out, but nobody ever reached for them when they needed to open a can. Most people would either reach for the manual can opener, which I really did like, this KitchenAid one, or this 10 year old workhorse electric can opener by Black & Decker that actually kind of is hands-free. In fact, I'll show you how it works. I just load it in here. Hands-free. Boom. The 232nd product I reviewed was Airworld. This is a $159 personal heating and cooling product. Let's first take a look at how my original review went. Today I've got the Airworld, which is a personal heating and cooling device. So far it's feeling, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's all right. I can feel it. It's not as cold as I expected it to be. It's certainly working. I guess I wanted it to be a little bit more powerful than this. So the air is cool if you want to go by the back of the, uh, the unit there. I feel warm air. I mean, not that warm. It's warmish. I guess it's kind of warm. It's not as warm as I expected. Does this look ridiculous? I'm, I'm not sure. Now, that doesn't look suspicious or anything, does it? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Match Game 1977. If you want a nice, light, cool breeze at your desk, you'll probably like it. If you want to offset the sweltering desert heat, you might not. So since my original review, the price of this has dropped from 160 down to 40 bucks. And there's been some other kind of knockoffs that have appeared on the store shelves, including an As Seen on TV product version that my friend Kathy from Two Cent Chick did review. I'll link hers as well in below. But I didn't really feel like it worked. Uh, I never really used them much because I didn't feel like it provided much of a benefit. It's, to me, it feels like an idea that still needs to be fleshed out a little bit. I feel like the Air World, maybe 2.0 if it ever comes out, would be something to look for. Number 233 was actually a comparison of doormats. For some of my tests, I had three doormats, but it was mainly a comparison of two of them, one that was advertised online versus one from Bed Bath & Beyond. Let's take a look at the original review and see how that went. There we go, perfect, nice and muddy. Rub it around, get, get some mud on there. And step, and then on the paper. I'm seeing uh, remnants. Re wow, it looks like that one did better than the others. <laughs> Super sponge. Um, the cleaner mat's not really looking that impressive to me. Not only that, but look at all that on there. This one seems like you don't see as much, nor this one. Let's see how clean this can get. One, two. Step, step. Step, step. Just to make sure we're not missing anything here. Oh yeah, look at that. 
Oh, oh, look at this. So in this case, the Super Sponge and the Clear Mac outperformed the cheap generic one. Super Sponge, cleaner mat, regular generic rubber mat. But I think that so far the Super Sponge came out pretty much on top of the first one, tied on the top of the second one, on top of the third one. The Super Sponge at half the price is on a roll. Now I've been using these doormats ever since that video. Uh, I washed them I think a couple of times, but I decided at some point I wanted to go an extended amount of time without washing them to see how they worked. So what I'm gonna do is show you how they look after about six months of not being washed. Then I'm gonna wash them, but let's see how they held up before and after a quick wash. Cleaner mat, flat as a pancake. I never barely goes. Belly's just doing one last test for us. The cleaner mat has just been completely flattened. The super sponge, in, in areas this has been flattened, but not everywhere. It, it definitely seems like it has more life in it left than this one, which seems like it's on its last leg. Let's see what happens after a quick wash. Let's take a closer look. Super sponge looks pretty good. It's almost good as new. The uh, clear mat still looks kind of flat. It looks better, but I mean, clearly the, the Super Sponge, which is larger, half the price, it just slaughters it. Even a year later, it still slaughters it. There will not be a rematch. The Super Sponge, once again, the king of the doormats. For my 234th video, I did a collection of gadgets that work. And usually when I do a collection of gadgets, I might use one long term. But in this case, I still use four out of the five items that were in that video. Let's first take a look at how that video went. Staple free stapler. Oh, it did put a hole in the corner. It's actually a pretty big hole, but they are, they're attached. That's, uh, that's pretty cool, I think. Six stainless steel drinking straws, that's right. And will it fit in here? It's the big question. Oh, it actually worked. Try each one of them. As they're phasing out straws these days, this might be an investment. This is the Red Shield phone stand. It feels kind of flimsy, but it hasn't fallen apart yet. So, uh, all right, there we go. How's that look? I think so far, so good. Let's keep going. Rub away steel bar of soap. I'll find out if it actually removes odors or not. Here we go, I'm gonna rub my hands on there. Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. It, it's smooth, as I would expect. I don't really smell the onion. That's, uh, that's pretty good. Grocery bag holders. I'm gonna put about five on each one of these. There we go. Do a little workout on the way there. Yeah. I'm a fan of the bag clips. So yeah, I've actually found myself using these steel straws, occasionally using the steel soap, somewhat often using the staple free stapler and all the time I use the red shield phone mount in fact I get asked about this one probably more than the others this is the one people seem to want the most and it's one that I use the most because it's in my wallet I did worry when I first got it that maybe bending this plastic these notches here would would break but it really has it it's held up pretty nicely and I think it was only 10 bucks so I think it was a pretty good investment so fortunately that collection of items turned out to be pretty useful to me The 235th product review I did was a collection of gadgets that kind of work. And I say kind of because just because they work doesn't mean they're very useful. And uh, let's first take a look at that video and then see how they held up since then. This is a French fry holder for your car cup holder. Oh, I kind of have to smash the side. Oh, it works. It works pretty good. The medium fry for McDonald's. Oh, that beautiful fit. What a perfect fit. This is a pair of sunglasses that helps you find golf balls easier. Whoa, <laughs> wow, that is the brightest blue I've, uh, I've ever seen in my life. I, I guess it kind of works. It does kind of stand out more. Is it better without the glasses or not? I'm still kind of on the fence. This is actually a laser keyboard. Oh, oh look, I got a keyboard here. Wow. I mean, I can't go real fast, but it's, it's kind of working. This paired with autocorrect is actually pretty cool. This pink blob is called the Shed Defender. It's something you put on your pets and it keeps the hair from getting all of your floors. He's biting it. Oh, Bailey. Okay, front paw. All right, I finally got on her. She just not, I couldn't zip all the way up. 
that she has hair coming down there that I'm afraid is going to pinch. And I don't think she likes it very much. Look, she doesn't look very happy. I'm going to take that off her. I'd rather have fur in my house than have you unhappy. It's not for everybody. It might be for some people. It's not for me. All right, so of all those gadgets, the french fry holder is the only one I've actually used with any kind of regularity whatsoever. Not that I eat a lot of french fries in my car, but when I have, I've actually used it. This isn't really something that wears out over time, so you know it's held up. I've actually had a lot of people asking me about this one as well. Now, toward the bottom of the list, the Shed Defender made my worst of 2019, because even though it does technically work, I'll never put this on my dogs again. I, I, don't, I don't really like the idea of it. Sorry, I mean, if it does work, but I'm not gonna use it. Number 236 was the $300 Ember Wave. This is a device that attaches to your wrist. It has a cooling plate and a warming plate on there that supposedly gives you a sense of well-being and it relaxes you, keeps you cool or warm. Here's some scenes from my original review. That's almost a fingerprint pattern to it. I can plug this in and download the app. I like this kind of cool green pulsating glow it emits when it's charging. Ember Wave on the inside of my wrist, I feel like it's kind of it's kind of hitting, so I was kind of lifting my hand up in a very awkward position to type like that. I guess you wear it on the top of your wrist like a watch, but they say to wear it on the inside of your wrist. Oh yeah. I don't know why I couldn't get on the cold. It's still warm and I don't feel like my cold wrists are really making me feel any colder. I think most people are not going to spend 300 bucks on this. Sorry, I don't, like, don't think they will. 15 bucks, 300. It's really hard to justify that kind of expense for something like this. So as with most products I review, I try to keep using it. I just didn't see much of a benefit. To me, it kind of was more in the way than anything because it's kind of clunky to be attached to your wrist. And you're supposed to have it on the underside of your wrist like that, that it really seems like it got in the way. To me, this is a product that suffers from OP syndrome, overpriced and overpromised. All right, my 237th product review video was a collection of travel gadgets. Wow, do I miss traveling. That's beside the point. That was kind of a collection of some newer and older shower products. So let's first take a look at how that video went. Seven in one, multifunction tool pin. Maybe it's not good for heavy duty jobs here. Uh, no, that's not turning. And you might get ink on your fingers when you're using the screwdriver. But for 15 bucks, it should do a lot more than that. These are UV sun meter cards. And it tells you the intensity and what kind of uh, sunscreen you should be looking at. Good thing I have one of my UV cards to tell me what I should wear. I'll put it in the sunlight for 10 seconds. Oh, it's changing colors already. Look how fast, not even 10 seconds. And even though I have my UV card to tell me that the UV index was pretty high, I still got burnt. Inflatable travel pillows. This is one that looked like it was popular online, looked kind of interesting. Have your hands rest in there and your face like that. I do not travel without this keyboard. These are the reading glasses. It goes in the back of your phone, which is a travel blanket. Now there's nothing really special about this. There's a million travel blankets. I thin optics and reading glasses. I've got my new blanket here. My Bluetooth keyboard. My wallet phone stand. So some of these gadgets actually come in handy. What do you know? All right, of the new items that I did in that video, I would say that the UV tester cards are ones that I've used on occasion. I usually leave this in my travel bag and it's, it was still there because I haven't really traveled much. I haven't traveled at all in 2020. I probably won't the rest of the year either. But it's, it's kind of more of a curiosity. I don't really use it too much as a guide because I usually bundle up in the sun anyways. But it's, it is kind of nice to know what the UV levels are in your area. Now the thin optics, I should point out, I've moved it from phone to phone and it's held up over time. So what happened was earlier this year I did uh, some phone cases and I took it off my phone, put it on my desk and left it there for a while. And even though it had been moved from phone to phone and it's three years old, the sticky backing took a hunk of my desk off. I take full responsibility for that. I probably should have laid it face down. I wasn't really thinking, but I mean, I guess that's good that the sticky backing is that good, but it wasn't good that it took a hunk out of my desk. I still like the thin optics though. The Bluetooth keyboard might be the gadget of all gadgets that I still use the most. Almost don't leave home without it. It's, it's something that I use so often. Although I really can't wait to do another travel gadget video, any kind of travel video. I can't wait to travel, but that's probably not gonna be until next year. Number 238 was a collection of car gadgets. Let's check out some scenes from that video. But this is actually a 
trash can for your car. Really all you have to do is just put it over the headrest like this. And then we have the uh, liners that came with it. Oh, it's trash back here. What's up? One person's gonna have the drive bin right in their face. It's called the Super Clean. Oh, it feels very slimy. Is this just that slime they sell for kids and they're just repackaging it for something else? Oh, well, I mean, it seems like it's picking up the dust. All right, let's try this. Blip. It's getting gunk off of there for sure. Luminous coasters for cars. A bottle of water being there, that's cool. I like that a lot. But what they don't show is other things. How about a can of soda? Uh, not quite as impressive as the bottle of water. These are these atmosphere car lights. All right, passenger side in the front. I'm not real thrilled with all these wires on my car. Look at all this. That does look pretty cool. This is the driver's side right here. I've noticed this. My foot has been bumping this, so it's actually starting to fall down here. I like the effect, but the adhesive is not very good. See, this one has not been falling off. I think maybe because it's out of the way of people's feet. When I put out the remote control, I have not been able to get to work. Try taking the battery out. Try putting a new battery in. It's not working. An inflatable mattress for the car. Oh, wow. Whoa. Ugh. I guess it's comfortable. I do feel like everything's kind of slightly sloped that way. All right, I'm actually laying in my back seat right now. It's actually quite comfortable, I must say. And there it is in the back seat of my car. Pretty comfortable. So of all of those gadgets, the drive bin is the only one that I actually still use. And I don't even buy the refills. I just use, I just use store bags and they work fine. The coasters I actually used for a while, but eventually I stopped using them and, and took them out of my car because to have to take them out of the cup holder and turn them on, it just, it, it just seemed like it was more work than it was worth, especially for something that most cups would actually block the light for. As far as the blingy lights goes, those did not hold up very long. The stickiness gave out quickly, and I, I don't know why. I've left them in my car for this video, to, just to show you that they're just they're just kind of all sitting there in my car I, i've left them in here they still light up unless you want to reinforce them with some stronger tape it's not really something that that held up very well over time and now this video is over i'm finally going to take these out of my car once and for all number 239 was the nostalgia snow cone maker let's take a quick look back at that review and see how it went it's a retro style snow cone maker that lets you make 20 snow cones at a time well that's an attractive looking unit if i've ever seen one it has 20 straws 20 disposable cone holders three flavors you get i guess this is right oh oh wow i'll show you close up here Oh yeah, this is, this is legit, man. They give you the straw of these cool scoops at the end, which I used to have when I was a kid. Mmm, wow, that brings back memories. It's not as fine as shaved ice, but it, it's, certainly, um, it's certainly good enough for a snow cone. Look at him over there, the purple penguin, paying five bucks for a snow cone. Well, we used our snow cone maker all last summer and it didn't cost us anything after our initial investment. The consistency may not be exactly the same as a high-end snow cone, but at that price, it's something you can make at home. It's probably a pretty good deal for most people, I think. I never had any issues with it breaking down. I never had any issues with any function of it. We actually found that it worked pretty well. So I think the nostalgia snow cone maker, once you get past the initial investment, is actually a pretty good deal. So my 240th product review was actually a comparison of two as seen on TV bug zappers, the Monster Zapper and the Monster Trapper. Let's take a look at how that video went. Now today I've got two as seen on TV bug zappers, the Monster Trapper and the Monster Zapper. It supposedly pulls the bugs down into here where they get zapped. Much smaller than the Monster Zapper, this is the Monster Trapper. It looks like it's gonna probably be able to handle much bigger bugs because this grate isn't as small as the one on the Monster Trapper. I put them on opposite sides of my patio, the Monster Zapper down here, and way down there is the Monster Trapper. It's only been out here for five minutes and I've already got three zaps. Bailey doesn't like these zaps though. She's a little bit confused at what that noise is. The Monster Trapper has not zapped, but I see little bugs crawling around on there. I haven't heard anything over here yet. I haven't heard a single zap. And we've got a tray full of bugs. The wind has been blowing a lot of the small bugs down here and these ants are picking them up and carrying them off. Uh -huh. Well, I did get some, not, not that many. Right now, the Monster Zapper is attracting all kinds of bugs. It's 
getting a lot of activity over there. The Monster Trapper, not so much. So yeah, in the end, I put the Monster Trapper away, never used it again. The Monster Zapper I used all through last year, and I put it away when the cold weather came in. I only used it briefly this year because Bailey's actually afraid of it. Every time it zaps, she gets scared. So I think that most people that buy the Monster Trapper might be disappointed, but most people who buy the Monster Zapper, they'll probably like it. All right, so that's it. I think that of this group, uh, the phone stand is probably the best one of all the new items I, I reviewed. But I also, the Bluetooth keyboard is probably the item I've used more than any of them, more than anything I've ever reviewed. That's just, the, that's just my go-to product pretty much everywhere. But of the new items, I would say the phone stand was the best. The worst, I would say based on the cost and the usefulness, it's gotta be Emberwave. But if you've tried any of these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. And I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time. Bailey. Look at him. Purple. The color of evil. Cameraman will not turn the camera off. Geez, it's a good thing I have this UV card and I'm sitting in the shade because otherwise I'd be burnt right now.